Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. Another presidential hopeful visits North Dakota, and on the same day, he's secured a majority of delegates to clinch the GOP nomination. Thank you for joining us tonight. Today, Donald Trump spoke at a conference in Bismarck. He's the second presidential candidate to visit. Bernie Sanders came to Fargo earlier this month. Among Trump's talking points, he addressed energy and why it's important to North Dakota. I'm delighted to be in North Dakota, a state where really you're at the forefront of a new energy revolution. Oil and natural gas production is up significantly in the last decade. Our oil imports have literally, frankly, been cut in half. That's something that nobody thought was going to be happening really for a very, very long time. Trump was invited to be the keynote speaker for the Williston Basin Petroleum Conference and Expo, where thousands turned out to hear him speak. Valley News Team's Bradford Eric takes us inside and then outside the rally as Trump secures enough delegates to win to uh, garner the nomination. This was the scene just days ago as violence erupted among protesters and police outside a Trump rally in New Mexico. Today, it was much more subdued, a more North Dakota nice protest, with a van attendees on one side of the road and about two dozen protesters separated by police tape. I'm out here protesting the, the rally because I'm a proud North Dakotan, I'm a proud American, and Donald Trump is a disgrace to America because he's racist, misogynistic, and his message of hate does not correlate with American values. I come from a proud family of immigrants. I love America and I think uh, Trump is a disgrace to America and what we stand for. The heat may have played a factor in one man being taken away by ambulance, but supporters didn't fear the opposition. And in New Mexico, they're all being flown in from wherever and paid to protest. So. Yeah, very un-American. Smith was one of the first people in line Thursday morning, grabbing her spot about 5 a.m. And while others came cascading in throughout the morning, it was surprising to see so many young faces. What brings you out to the Trump rally today? Um, I like Trump. Um, you know, I, I think he'll sh shake things up and, you know, do uh, good for the country. And it was a packed house at the Bismarck Civic Center, with one website estimating seating capacity at 10,100 people. And it was thunderous applause that greeted Donald Trump, too, as he took the stage. In Bismarck, North Dakota, Bradford Eric, Valley News Live. We'll have much more in-depth coverage on 630 Point of View, covering some of the topics Trump discussed today. And if you missed Trump speak, we have his full speech at valleynewslive.com. Just click on this story. To new information now, a person of interest in a Fargo murder will stay in jail for another couple of months following a court appearance today. Landon uh, Luegi is in the Sibley jail on a probation violation. Today in district court, he admitted to violating his probation. He's expected to serve 90 days in jail, 10 of which have already been served. Fargo police say Luegi is a person of interest in the murder of Corey Terlecki, who was found dead in her home earlier this month. Terlecki's cause of death has been ruled homicidal violence. Fargo police say Luegi got a lawyer and they haven't been able to speak with him about the death yet. Police add they believe the investigation will take quite a bit of time. A Fargo woman is in jail after what police say was a shooting outside Hawley Elementary School. The Hawley Police Department says 34-year-old Leslie McCroskey is believed to have shot out the window of a school custodian's car in an attempt to steal it last night. The custodian found the suspect sitting in uh, the vehicle in his vehicle and called police. Officers say they found a handgun and ammunition in McCroskey's vehicle nearby, and there were also items recovered that were related to an incident earlier in the day at a Moorhead rest stop. The showers really green things up a bit, and on top of that, sunshine today. Is there anything to worry about tonight? Let's find out from Hutch Johnson in First Weather. Hutch? Well, we are going to have some hit and miss showers and thunder showers, but most of us will get through the early evening hours unscathed. And speaking of those rain showers, last night's storms into the early hours this morning took a trek from southeast North Dakota into Lakes Country. Out at our rain gauges here at the uh, KVOY studios, we had rainfall of six tenths of an inch, but some spots down in southeastern North Dakota got upwards of an inch of rain near Oaks, where they reported one inch hail, and northern and central Becker County. 
uh, estimates from the radar of around an inch of rain as well. This afternoon, showers and thunderstorms forming near Lake Sakakawea moving east-northeast and a couple of cells trying to fire in the Jamestown area. Those will be drifting northeast as we head through the evening right now. They're moving at about 25 miles per hour. I do not anticipate widespread severe weather at all tonight. Temperatures in the 70s with quiet conditions in Fargo and in Grand Forks, if you're out and about, will be in the 60s for most of the evening after we get through the 7 o'clock hour. Pretty fair weather to close out the mm -hmm. night. More rain in the forecast as we head to the weekend. Unsettled pattern is over us, and I'll have details mm -hmm. here in a minute. All right, thanks, Hutch. You bet. It was a terrible crime that remains a blight on Valley history. The 1882 lynching of an African-American man in Grand Forks. However, an East Grand Forks veteran says it's a part of our history that should be remembered and acknowledged. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson shows us how, after years of persistence, Richard Rybacki's goal of a memorial to the incident may soon become a reality. Only the main support of a railroad bridge that used to cross the Red River at downtown Grand Forks remains. But an ugly piece of its history is still documented in an 1882 photograph. African-American Charles Thurber was hung from the bridge by a lynch mob. He was accused of raping two white women. However, one of those women may have later recanted their story. For years, Richard Rybacki has been pressuring the city to put up some type of memorial. Why keep bringing this up? Uh, why do you want to memorialize such a ugly part of Grand Forks history? Because it is history. And history, everybody should have the right to know what happened. Uh, kind of all here in the vein of uh, those who <laughs> don't learn history are doomed to repeat it? Yes, yes, that is true. That is true. Way back in February of 1997, the city did allocate $500 for a Charles Thurber memorial here. However, that plan was washed away by the flood of 97 and the confusion that followed. However, it now appears a memorial could finally become a reality. It's a very important uh, mm -hmm. for us as a community to uh, recognize our history, to embrace that and to uh, symbolize that uh, represented the best we can. So right now we're working with them. Um, the Grand Forks Historic Preservation to make sure that we have a historical account that we can use. We're looking at a potential of a plaque. A plaque that could be similar to others here that line the trails along the river and explain the area's history. Over in downtown Duluth, another lynch mob hung three African-American men back in 1920. Duluth has put up a large memorial to make sure its past is not forgotten. And now Grand Forks may also soon memorialize its history in an effort to create a better future. In Grand Forks, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. Pete Haga says they don't have an exact time yet of when that memorial to Charles Thurber will be built. However, he says he's confident it will happen. If you'd like to learn more about the Grand Forks incident, visit the Special Collections Department at UND's library. We also have an online link to extensive information regarding the Duluth incident. Just go to valleynewslive.com and click on this story. Legislative leaders in Minnesota are out touring the state, talking about the need to finish up and pass the bonding bill. Legislators from the House and Senate are touring together, stopping at the project sites they deem the most important, one of which is the overpass in South Moorhead. City officials and emergency responders were also on hand to reiterate why funding this project is so urgent. Members of the House and Senate agree. They aren't blaming one another for the bonding bill not getting passed, but say a confusion and misunderstanding is why it couldn't get done during the regular session. The projects in this bill are so important that, you know, we're obviously willing to talk about that amendment or, uh, you know, anything else that folks see as, as vitally important to make sure that we get this funding passed. Um, so uh, I think it was just a, a matter of uh, the, the clock running out before we could get the bill passed through both chambers with identical language. And that's what it takes to get it to the governor's desk. The rail safety upgrades Moorhead is hoping for will cost $34.5 million. The list of candidates vying for the assistant city administrator position for the city of Fargo is down to five. Here's the list. Three of the five are from the FM area. These candidates were chosen by a selection committee from a pool of 33 applicants. Before one is offered the job, they will be interviewed on June 3rd. Some third graders got a treat on one of their last days at school, an up-close and personal look at some animals from the Red River Zoo. 
The Zoo Mobile stopped by Ed Clapp Elementary School and brought along a cockatoo, a bull snake, and a blue tongued skink. The kids had a chance to learn about and see and touch the animals. The education program director says the special interaction helps the kids understand the animals and hopefully gets them to care a little more about sharing our environment. Uh, today I did have a conservation message of being aware of um, what they do with some of their waste. I talked a little bit about letting go of balloons or recycling and different things like that and what they could do to help animals in their environment. The Zoo Mobile is out a couple times a week, sometimes daily, visiting schools and child care centers and nursing homes. The Lindy Hop and Charleston are forms of swing dancing. If you have ever wanted to learn or watch swing dancing, you have the chance tonight in Fargo. The group Fargo Swing Dancing is hosting the event with a live jazz band. Members of the group woke up with the Valley today and showed off some of their dance moves. They say swing dancing is a dance any person can do, no matter what, the, who the, what your age is, and is affordable for students and families. Yeah, five, yeah, five bucks or eight bucks, and it's, I mean, that's, that's one drink these days. So it's, it's, yeah, it's super cheap, and you get nights full of, nights full of entertainment. So. Reagan says the Fargo Swing Dance community has been around for about 15 years, but just recently they started to host more events and expand the interest. To learn more about tonight's event, click on this story at valleynewslive.com.